Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I have a super cool one for you guys. Aeronet was kind enough to send us this Aeronet 4 free for review. So I am very excited to take a look at this. This is basically an air quality sensor that you can put pretty much anywhere in your home, your office, your workplace. I guess you could even put it in your car if you wanted. I might actually try that out just for fun. But in this video, we're gonna go over everything. So I'm gonna unbox it first, then I'm going to set it up and use it for a couple weeks. Uh, and then in the same video, I'm going to splice it all together and give you guys my full review. So through the magic of editing, this will all be in one video, but right now I'm going to unbox it, show you guys around, and we're gonna take a look. So here is a quick look at the box. Making sensors wireless is what it says all the way around. And then on the bottom here, I'm gonna cover up the serial number you guys can read. This is an innovative battery powered CO2 sensor with an e-ink display. It can also measure the temperature, relative humidity, and atmospheric pressure. And it has an application where you can basically pull all the data in and look at it anytime. Now, if this is as good as it seems, this is going to be uh, one of my most recommended products. When people ask us what the best air quality sensors are, not only that, but Aeronet's support and email communication is very fast. And I really do appreciate that. There's other companies that lag behind a little bit in that. So let's go ahead without further ado, pop the top. And here we go. We've got a quick start guide right here. And let's just take a look at it. It's gonna give us a good average or unhealthy reading. Let's see what else. Oh, wow. this. This opens up like a book. There we go. Just showing you guys the manual here in case you lose yours. Want to take a look. Very nice. I like how they have laid this out. And here are the batteries it comes with. Very nice to see that's included. And here's the device itself. Look how small this is. Compared to my hand, you can tell this thing is pretty darn small and it looks pretty unique. So it's got this little graphic right now basically telling you to put in the battery. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. And there are those little switches that the uh, manual is mentioning right there. So if you wanna put it into Celsius or Bluetooth on and off, stuff like that, you can do that right here. It looks like it is calibrated from the factory according to the little pamphlet here. And it also, it looks like it is in Celsius mode right now, which uh, is not something that I want. So I'm gonna switch that right now. So I'm gonna use the little included, looks like a SIM tool uh, for those of you that are familiar. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one down into Fahrenheit mode here. And just like that it is now in Fahrenheit mode, which is perfect. Bluetooth is going to be on. And that little Wi-Fi symbol, that's for those of you that have the uh, Pro Bay station, which I do not. So there's no need for me to have that on. Let's put these batteries in and see this thing power up. And just like that, it is booted up. That was super quick. And this is an e-ink display, so it should last a very, very long time. I'm gonna go over all that in the full review. This was really just to set it up and see how long it takes. And this looks really cool. And that was so easy. I mean, literally just making one change to put it in a Fahrenheit and going ahead and putting in the batteries. That was the easiest setup I think I've ever done for a home air quality monitor. So gotta give credit where credit is due. Very easy to set up. And that's pretty much all there is. And I was reading about this. It is totally okay to put this up against a wall like this if you want to mount it uh, because the airflow just needs to go through it this way. Uh, that's really all there is to it. So no worries about putting it up against a wall because the air can still go through. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, next to some of my other CO2 sensors and thermometers that I have throughout the studio here. And also back at my house, I'm going to test it all over the place and make sure that this thing is up to snuff and measuring properly. So I think that's all I've got for this portion of the video. I will splice in the rest of it here in just a minute, um, but this is one quick look around at the device and I'm gonna go ahead and set this up and we'll see how it does. All right, on to the rest of the review. All right, guys, so we are back in and I've been using this device for a little over a week now. And I'm gonna give you a complete overview of how this device operates and what I've been loving about it so far. So first of all, after this week of use, I am very, very happy that this has an e-ink display. You can see it from pretty much any angle here, no issues at all. So uh, for me personally, just to tell you guys how I use it, I set it on my desk kind of like this at an angle. So that was like the perfect spot for me, you know, while I'm working throughout the day to kind of monitor and keep an eye on the CO2 levels, the temperature, make sure everything looks good as I'm testing this device. And we're gonna look at the app here in a second, but I've set this to uh, refresh every one minute. I typically have it set to five minutes, uh, but for the video, I've set it to every one minute. So you'll probably see the screen go black for a second. That just means it's updating because that's how e-ink displays work. There it goes. And the CO2 is going up and the temperature is probably gonna drop because the studio is a little bit chilly. And taking one last look around the device before we hop into the app, you can see the little air inlets on the side. Everything's been holding up perfectly. I used this indoors and I also took it outside just to get a baseline and make sure that this was actually calibrated because for a little bit, I wasn't sure. Cause I have two other sensors 
and they're all reading a little bit differently, but let's hop into the app and take a look there. All right, guys, so this is the application. It is a very nice app, very simple, not a whole lot to it, but it gives you the information that you need. So we got the device down here. You guys could already see, based on this little sensor right here, this is a sticker, and then this corresponds to the color. So right now it's in the yellow, and that color corresponds right here. So if I click on that 1063 right now, it's gonna pull all the recent data via Bluetooth, from the device to my iPhone. And here we go. So this is today so far. You can kind of get a graph since midnight and see what it's been doing. Overnight, it usually drops a bit in my office just due to having the AC on all night and keeping it nice and cool. And then you can see right here, you've got the today lowest and highest. And then you can even back out to yesterday, see the lowest and highest as well, or seven days and see the lowest and highest there. So with seven days, you can really see some peaks and valleys which is interesting. And this kind of lets you know, you know, was anyone in the office at that point? Because typically CO2 levels will rise as more people are in there. So it looks like my peak was only about 1200 for the whole week. So that's not bad at all, in my opinion. This is kind of one of those devices that I recommend everyone get at least one of, just to kind of get a baseline for what your house, your office, whatever is especially if you feel groggy all the time and kind of out of it or hard to focus, this could actually lead you to what the problem is. It could just be high CO2 levels. Some houses just seem to have CO2 issues where it traps in a lot of that and there's not a whole lot of airflow. I would always have one of these in my house, my studio, uh, maybe buy a couple of them. For me personally, I know they're a little bit expensive, but to get one that's quality like this, that's definitely the way to go. You don't want a cheap one because I actually bought a cheap one from AliExpress just to test out and it was fake. It literally was just reading random stuff I would blow on it, I would put it in different environments, it wouldn't change. This one is legit, it uses an NDIR sensor, which is very precise, and this has been calibrated from the factory, so you know it is working. But it's not just CO2 that this device can do. So if I go down here, I can see the temperature changes, so you can see the fluctuations here. So it got up to almost 76, that's pretty high, and got down to about 70 and nighttime, so you can kind of get an idea. Right here, it went up to 80. That's when I took this thing outside to get a base level reading for the outdoor air, because typically you wanna see around maybe 400, 420 parts per million of CO2. I wanted to check that. Here is the humidity, relative humidity that is, uh, and you can see it's pretty constant, so that is good. And then here we have the atmospheric pressure. Again, this is not adjusted for elevation. This is just the straight up pressure, and it is definitely interesting to see. And this is for the past seven days. Now, once you've had this for a while, you might be looking at this graph and think, I really want to go back to a certain day. They have a calendar button right here where you can go back and choose what day you want to see. Uh, so I could go back to the 26th, select it. There we go. Now I can see all of that data right away. And it looks like this is when I took it outside. And you can see the PPM for CO2 is just about exactly what I was expecting it to be. That's how I know this thing is calibrated properly. For this portion, I'm gonna keep the phone down here just so I can have an easy blurring method for the serial number, but you can name your Aeronet whatever you would like. For the time being, I just made mine Slim Aeronet. You got the name, the serial number, the measurement interval, like I mentioned, I've got mine set to one minute for now, but if you click on that, you can change it to one, two, five, or 10 minutes. Uh, if you want the battery to last a lot longer, obviously choose 10 minutes but I found the sweet spot is about five. Now there's also a buzzer. So if you want this thing to alert you audibly when it hits a specific CO2 level, uh, you can turn that on. So right now I've got mine set to off, but if you want, you can have it set to buzz when it hits 1400, it'll beep one time. That's for on once. There's also on every time and it will beep every CO2 measurement that's over 1400. I check mine pretty often, so I can keep that off. Bluetooth range, normal and extended. I did test this and extended really does extend the Bluetooth range. I'm assuming this is just putting out more power. So I keep mine on normal just to keep the consumption low, but if you needed it on extended, it totally works and it does extend it quite a bit. I was able to punch through two extra walls with that on. I've got smart home integration toggled on. Firmware version, you can see right here, you can click on that. It says it's up to date, so that's great. Now for CO2 indication, I've got mine set to default and you can kind of see what the different colors represent here. You can see tip 420 PPM equals fresh outdoor air, but you can of course click custom there and change this if you didn't want you know, that to be yellow, you could change it to 2000 or something else if you really wanted. And then there's CO2 calibration. Right now mine is set from the factory, but you can calibrate it yourself if you want. Uh, but me personally, there's no need. It just came from the factory, so it should be perfect. Now let's back out of this menu and let's hop into the actual settings here. So this is the app settings. I've got mine set to English, Fahrenheit, HPA, and then this is how I've got the date format. Full screen mode is off. Keep screen on is off, background data read is off, and then you've got the option to pair another device if you have multiple. 
And lastly, there's a tiny little change that you can do. If you click this button right here, you can change the format of this area right here if you want. I personally like the CO2 to be front and center because that's what I'm most concerned about. Now let's talk about the accuracy here. So regarding the accuracy, I have found the temperature to be almost exactly spot on. Like it is awesome. The humidity is pretty dang close to my other humidity sensors that I have. I've got about three or four of them that I, you know, test and keep everything calibrated. So it's very close. These two are almost 100% exact. The pressure, I don't really pay attention to because most of my pressure sensors are adjusted for elevation. For some reason, this one's not. So that is one thing I wish Aeronet would, you know, maybe send out a software update where we could enter our elevation and it would automatically calibrate that properly for us. That would be awesome. It's very difficult for me to gauge this because I have three devices total that do CO2. One of them I had to return. It was not Aeronet. It was a different brand. It was so far off. Uh, I'll probably have a video up on that later. It's, it was a horrible device. It's kind of a competitor to this one a little bit, but uh, Aeronet is so much better. Then I have another one from another company and that one reads about 100 lower than this one. So I think that one's off a little bit. And then we have this one, which I consider to be the gold standard. So I take this one very seriously. Now up here, you can see it says Aeronet and Slim Aeronet, and it's got the little uh, battery logo showing that everything's good. Now let's talk about the only nitpicky thing that I can say besides the little, you know, pressure being elevation calibrated. That would be th on the screen, there is a tiny smudge. I don't know if you'll see it. It's on the side here. I noticed it right when I was unboxing it uh, and it's under the display, so I can't clean it. It's very hard to see. Maybe you can see it there. Um, yeah, it's like when they were building it, maybe they someone accidentally smudged it. This is the only nitpicky thing that I can say about this device. If that's my biggest problem, uh, this thing is almost perfect. Now for $200 or 250, uh, whatever it's going for, links down below. If you wanna take a look and see what it's going for right now, it might be on a sale. But for 200 bucks, I would expect it to be, you know, flawless on the display side. So maybe that's one thing that they could improve on as well. But for me personally, I care more about the numbers. And so far, the numbers have been perfect. So do I recommend this device? Absolutely, yes. This is actually what I'm going to recommend to most of my family and friends because I really do trust the numbers that this Aeronet 4 gives out. It's so nice to use. I'm actually planning to do more testing with it in the car. I did that a couple times with it. The results were pretty interesting, especially when you turn on recirculation in your car. It seemed to spike the CO2 quite a bit. Uh, so I'll have to do more testing, but that's just another thing you could do with this device, you know, test all your different rooms in your house. I think you have to let it sit for like 10 or 15 minutes to kind of acclimate to your room. But overall, this thing is super solid. This is just one of those devices that I can see myself recommending. And if Aeronet does have uh, more devices in the future they'd like us to take a look at, of course, we'd be open to looking at them because solid product, solid customer support. Overall, everyone's been friendly from the company. That makes for a very good product. So check this one out, links to it down below. Let me know your thoughts on this product. If you have one for yourself, let me know how you're liking it. Uh, personally, I think the minimalist design is just about perfect for a device like this. It looks just techy enough to kind of pique your interest. It's easy enough to just put in a corner and no one will bat an eye at it. It kind of just blends in. If you like the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.